Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Castillo. I'm currently working on um, packet sniffing as a project for my EEL 4789 class at Football Hacking. And today I'll be presenting to you the topic of packet sniffers and I'll give you a really interesting program that you can use to do your own packet sniffing. Now, uh, be aware packet sniffing can or cannot be legal depends on what purpose you're using it for. So if you're using it to uh, check to see if there's anybody on your network, and then that would be the legal use of packet sniffing. So, alright everyone, let's get started. So, packet sniffing. Packet sniffing is being able to gather all the packets that are being transmitted on a single network. Now normally, if you have a laptop, you cannot do this type of packet sniffing because your wireless card on your laptop will not allow you to do so. So as such, you have to buy a NIC card. A NIC card has something called a capture drive. It allows you to capture multiple packets on the same network. Now I'll be presenting you with um, the software that I use. The software in this video is going to be called uh, Wireshark. Now if you do not have Wireshark, you can go to sectools.org. I repeat, sectools.org. Let me open up and show you what it looks like. This is sectools.org. And uh, as you see, very popular, the first link is Wireshark. Just follow the instructions and you'll be able to download it relatively easy. Just use the wizard. You guys will be fine. So, let's open up Wireshark. Okay. So, oh. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, you guys may be wondering, yes, this tool is free. So, don't worry about trying to break the tool. Now, if you noticed, in the capture section, as soon as you open up the application, you get to pick what kind of capture you want to use. So we're just going to get this started. Let's start. And as you can see, now our program is capturing packets. Now, you guys may be wondering, some of you may not be tech savvy, what exactly is a packet? Well, in order for information to be transferred from device to device over a wireless or hard link network, they're transmitted in bursts of data called packets. Packets are in relative sizes of bytes. It can vary from packet to packet depending on the type of packet. So for this particular example that I want to show you, we're going to be looking at HTTP packets. HTTP packets are what allow you to browse and surf the internet. So um, let's just put an HTTP in our filter. See, on the top of the Wireshark, you can put what's called a filter choose the type of packets you want to input. Now, many of you that know coding, uh, you can specify the filter using code, as for uh, example, uh, the IP address. So I'll read the IP dot ADPR, equals, and specify an IP address, for example, and see what's going on. Now, I will be receiving all the packets for this particular IP address, which is my current IP address. So if you ever want to single some uh, computer out and you know the rest of the IP uh, on their network, then you can do so using the filter. So going back to what I was saying, we will do HTTP and see what people are looking at on the internet. Okay. So, for my example for today, I'm going to be trying to log into a website. And I will show you the packet that is used to transfer my information to try to log into the website. The packet will come back as a cookie. The cookie stores your username and password. Depending on the website, if it's an encrypted website, such as like HTTPS, then you will not be able to read the username and password because it will be encrypted. But otherwise, if it's a standard HTTP website with a login, you will be able to see the information in plain text as it is stored in ASCII code, which is readable to the average user. So, go here. Now, the website I'm going to use to log in is called uh, Geeks for Geeks. So, just go to the login page. It's important to note that even though this login will fail because I don't have an account. You will still get the cookie of the username and password that I tried to input. So I'm going to type in user and my password. 
password again. User, the login, and we're going to say error, incorrect username and password. So I'm going to go back to Wireshark and I'm going to stop capturing packets. So now we can uh, traverse our packets that are being collected to see if we can find our cookie. Now, most often or not, your cookie will be stored in a post HTTP file. Well, not file. This being so, you transmitted data over the network to a website, and the website sends it back to you. So, post is the keyword that we want to look for. Let's turn this back. Oh, look, post right here. So, we have the packet that we're looking for. Now we want to see if we can find the cookie. Now, remember I said that packets are bursts of information? Well, packets are often broken down into multiple bursts. So we want to convert them to a single readable TCP document. You just right click, follow TCP stream, and there you go, we have a document. So now it's all a matter of finding the cookie. So let's just traverse our document, see if we can find a cookie. Notice we have one cookie right here. And right over here, you guys may be shocked. This is the cookie that we're looking for. So as you can see, it registered my login and my password. So since but this wasn't an HTTPS website, I repeat, it was not an HTTPS website, which means the username and password not encrypted. It was a standard HTTP website. Our username and password are stored in the passkey, which is readable to the local user. Let's just close our filter, our TCP stream, and we can look at other files. Sorry about that. Um, I wish I could kind of crash over. So going back to the normal page for Wireshark, back when I said you could select the capture driver, it's important that if you have a NIC card on your, on your laptop, that you select the capture card, because otherwise it will use your standard card of your laptop, which, as I stated earlier, will not allow you to capture other people's packets except your own. So please make sure to do so. Now, <coughs> I'm going to talk about where you should be placing your sniffer. Now, it's important to note that if you have a particular target in mind where you want a packet sniff, you need to be on the same subnet, which means you need to be connected to the same router that they're connected to. If you're not connected to the same router, you will not be able to sniff their packets. Now, this can be best explained as an umbrella, where the router is a tip of the umbrella, and all the other computers are connected within the subnet are, t are connected to just that one router. The only way that you can retrieve packets is if you're in the same umbrella aka the router. So make sure that if you have to package with somebody that you are for sure certain that you are in the same network. Otherwise the software becomes useless and package sniffing it has no value. It's also important to note that while you're package sniffing you may see IP addresses with a dot two five five at the end. Even though you're not searching for that particular IP address that will pop up. That is also known as the broadcast IP address, and that is uh, a broadcast message being sent out to every computer on the network. So even if you're looking after one, just one IP address, you'll be getting the broadcast IP messages also. So you have to make sure that you're not looking at the broadcast message when you're trying to find a single user. Now I'm going to be talking to you about what the different uses of Wireshark can be. Now, as many of you know, all oh, looking at packets and finding passwords, oh, that's, that's all good fun now and then. But one of the things that you can use Wireshark for is network analyzing. And network analyzing is a very important tool. Because network analyzing will let you figure out if your computer has been turned into a zombie. Yes, I repeat, zombies are real and they're in computers. So what happens is, if you go to a malicious website, or you get some sort of virus, that installs bots into your computer, then your computer can be taken over by what's called uh, botnetting, and it becomes, in essence, a zombie. You can still function on your computer, but somebody else has a backdoor file uh, to your computer and can use your computer to access the internet and do 
many multiple things. Now, um, you don't know if you have a zombie unless you see excessive amounts of packets being transmitted over a network to you and from you. Zombies tend to work in uh, mass groups, so you need to be on the lookout for excessive transmission of packets, which is what we were learning about when I talked to you before about why shared packets are there. So be on the lookout before uh, being turned into a zombie. It's not fun. You, know, you don't you don't want your computer obeying somebody else's commands. Um, another feature that you can use for network analyzing is you can prevent yourself from being art poison. Uh, art poison, the hacking computer is on the same subnet as you and sends out uh, multitudes of packets requests to you and another computer and it will poison your art table. Now with a poisoned art table, whenever you try sending a packet to a different computer on the same subnet, it will instead get transferred to the hacker computer and the hacker computer will transmit it to the computer you wanted to send to initially, and the hacker will be able to change the payload of the packets as he so pleases because he is in essence the man in the middle. So packet sniffing has a lot of many uses, just uh, make sure you don't use it for illegal purposes. You can use it to prevent yourself from becoming a zombie, you can use it to detect if you've been up poisoned, and you can use it to find out uh, how secure your logins are on the websites because then again if it does not have an HTTPS and I cannot I cannot strongly emphasize this even more do not log into a page that is not a secure website do not put any of your private information that isn't encrypted because anybody can download this free software jump on your same router be able to analyze your packets and find your username, your password, your typed in credit card information, your social security number if you input it on a website, anything in a non-secure website. So HTTPS is the way to go for, um, for using, buying stuff online, logging into a social media group. Yes, be careful with social media groups. Some of them are not all HTTPS enabled, so you have to keep a lookout on them. One of my final pointers I want to point out for security, you've seen how Wireshark can be used. So, and this can happen as long as you're on the same subnet. So make sure, well, if you go to McDonald's or you go to Starbucks, any place that has free Wi-Fi, that you are, must be aware that there is the possibility, or almost certain possibility, that somebody is on that network sniffing your packets. And I know everybody's all hopped up, oh, free Wi Fi, free Wi Fi, I need to get free Wi Fi right now. That's not always the best case. Make sure you know where you're connected to and make sure you know who is connected to the same network. Uh, hackers have many tools these days, and one of them is being able to find that information about you. That is the single most powerful tool that you can give a hacker. It's information about yourself. And giving in your username, passwords, etc., that is way too much information for a hacker to use to exploit you. So, my closing arguments I taught you what packet sniffing was. I showed you a software that you can use to packet sniff for educational purposes and for your own personal security. I taught you how to use the filters. I taught you what what you need for you to use it on, on a laptop, which is a NIC card. I also taught you what could happen to your computer without you knowing, and the way that you can prevent it from happening by using a packet sniffer, aka being turned to a zombie or having your art table poisoned. You do not want that to happen. Can't stress it. And I also taught you to not use public Wi-Fi willingly and carefree. Whatever you send over the internet or free Wi-Fi can be found and somebody can just sniff your packets. It is, it's so easy to sniff your packets. And in a matter of 15 minutes, I've explained to you what packets are and how to use it. Anybody can do this. So be warned and um, worry and have a nice day. Thank you.